Hey, it's still August, which means it's Washington Wine Month, and it's almost a de facto rosé month, or rosé summer, or something like that. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and review 2018 Charles and Charles Rosé. It's a collaboration. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Scott with the Rookie Wine and Whiskey Enthusiast. And yes, it is August, which means it's Washington Wine Month. And today um, we are reviewing another, yet another rosé. Um, it is a 2018 rosé from Charles and Charles, which is a collaboration. Now, obviously, I've done a Charles Smith rosé before. He's one of the collaborators. The other gentleman is Charles Bayer, I think is his name, by Bielier, B-I-E-L-E-R. Uh, anyways, this particular rosé is not a single variety, but it is a blend. Now, remember I've, I've mentioned in the past that uh, a lot of winemakers will just take their leftover grapes and throw them into and make them into a rosé or red blend. Um, Charles Smith is not one to do that just, uh, you know, to, to use up all the grapes. He wants to make sure, and he's got the reputation of making sure that what he's making is a quality product. So let's go ahead and this particular uh, rosé, it is a blend. It's a lot of grapes. The reason I picked this one up right off the bat is 71% Syrah, which is my personal favorite varietal, followed by 17% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Mavedre, 4% Grenache, 2% Coenice, and 1% Cinso. So let's go ahead and take a look, first of all, on the visual on this. I'm going to use my white napkin since I now have a red tablecloth here. This is a strong, pale pink. Yeah, very translucent. Nothing in there. Let's go ahead right to the nose. The nose on this very prominent grapefruit nose, watermelon, and a minerality, uh, almost like a wet river rock. So uh, the minerality, I'm, I'm going to assume, now this is a Columbia Valley rosé, so that means the grapes, the Columbia Valley is the largest AVA in the state of Washington, but with, at 71% uh, Syrah, Syrah has a tendency in the state of Washington to be extremely minerally. Um, so I, it's, it's not unexpected on a rosé with that much Syrah in it to, to come up with a, a wet river rock style minerality. Let's go ahead and give it a taste though. Okay. Right off the bat, that grapefruit really comes through, followed by a ripe but sour well, i guess a sour cranberry a sour cranberry flavor the watermelons there uh, more towards the end of the of the initial shock of the palate but the minerality has changed it's not wet river rock now it's more like a graphite style of, of flavor to it so let's go ahead and take one more Yeah, pretty much confirms that cranberry, the watermelon, and it's a sa it's a sour cranberry too. Now it's a rosé, so the finish is going to be relatively short. Um, all the flavors pretty much hold on together. There's no separating of the flavors, and they just all kind of drop off the same time. Um, the minerality maybe lingers a little bit more so than the flavors do. Um, but it's a crisp, clean uh, rosé. The body on this, this is a medium minus uh, body. Uh, there's not a whole lot of heft to it. Uh, the tannins, shockingly, there's, it's, I would label this a medium, tan, a medium tannic rosé. Um, there is a little bit of drying on the, on the teeth that kind of gives me that. You want to lick your teeth to, to kind of wet them again. That's what the tannins do. The acidity on this. Again, it's probably a medium, medium acidity to it. The alcohol level, 
This sits at 12.6% alcohol by volume. It does not taste like a 12.6. This tastes more like a 10% or lower rosé. So if you're going to be drinking this and it's a hot day, be very careful. Um, this one here goes down extremely easy. There's my wine dog. He wants some attention. Uh, thank you, Buck, for making an appearance. Um, again, on the sweet now on the sweetness, this is definitely a very dry, not bone dry, but it is definitely a dry wine. Um, I think I paid eleven dollars for it at my local Hagen. Is this something that I'm going to go rush out again and buy a case of it? No. This is something that's readily available here in the Pacific Northwest. It may even be readily available wherever Charles Smith's wines are sold. Um, is it a decent wine? Yeah. For the summer, my dog is now flopping around the tripod. My wife is. Who's my cameraman today? is trying to prevent my wine dog from becoming the center of attention. Anyways, um, I'm not going to go ahead and go out and run out and buy a case of this wine. Okay, like I said, it's readily available. But is it something that you could easily take out on a hot summer day out on the lake, out on the river? Yeah, it is. This is a good wine. I'm going to rate this. I'm going to score this probably about an 83 out of 83 out of 100. Again, it's not... Other rosés that I've had earlier, like earlier this summer, that were much better, I think. But for the price, it's a really decent, solid rosé. So, kudos. And with that, I want to go ahead and thank you for tuning in uh, to YouTube's only Washington State wine-centric YouTube channel. Um, if you like this content, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button or hit the thumbs down button. If you didn't like it, that's perfectly fine with me as well. Um, if you did like it though, please go ahead and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, a little bell icon is going to go ahead and pop up. Hit that little bell icon that way. When I do upload these videos, you are one of the first people notified. So, that being said, have you had the Charles and Charles collaboration rosé before? Please go ahead and put that down in the comments down below. What were your thoughts about it? Is there a rosé, Washington State rosé, an Oregon rosé, a California rosé that you guys want me to try? Please put that in the comment section as well. As always, please do drink responsibly, and life is too short for either bad wine or bad whiskey. This is a decent wine. Cheers.